above field, you're cleared to enter flight pattern. We're using runways three and four. John Farrington. I called you from Cleveland about the... Yes, I just got in. Is it ready? Good. How soon? Good. Uh, I'll wait at the airport. The Texas Ranger statue. Oh, yes. How will you know me? Oh, uh, I'll know you. You'll be carrying the cage. John Farrington. Miss. Straight wire, please. Ten words. Let me see. It comes to exactly a dollar twenty-one cents. Mayor of Dallas City Hall. I'm here, the truth is here, Dallas is on trial, Farrington.
Forgive me, but I must be sure. No cat's paw for you. No sudden shock. No rending of flesh. Just the brief touch of my pen. long, waxed louder and louder. Moses spoke and the heavens answered. I too have come to the top of the mount, even as Moses. Speak to me. Give me a sign. Check the rates before you wired for reservations. Relax, will you? Trademarks right across the uh, the expressway there. We can sleep till ten of nine and still be to work by nine o'clock. I don't know. Something's just gone out of my life forever. Hey! Let me ask you something. Did you see those five lovelies that just waltzed by and got into the car and drove away? Yeah. And you're Buzz Murdoch? Yeah. Well, the Buzz Murdoch that I know would never have let an opportunity like that slip by to throw himself in front of the car. what a rare thing it was and how it could have been? Like catching Haley's Comet by the tail or finding a whole field of four-leaf clovers. Buzz, never in our long, gray lives will we have a chance. Like... says, but I guess it's a little too noisy. Maybe we should find a room somewhere else, huh? Hello? Executive secretaries of Dallas and Fort Worth unite. Yeah, Chief. Yeah, I was just about ready for my big introduction when they told me you're on the phone. No, no, that's okay. You know how I hate to make speeches. Trouble? Farrington. Isn't that the Cleveland case where, uh... Now, Dallas, huh? Well, how long ago did Mayor Cabell get the wire? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll make my apologies and come right in. No. No, frankly, I don't. I don't have the slightest idea how we'll catch him. That's if you want it straight out. How do you catch a puff of smoke? Nobody's ever seen him. Nobody alive. 
Okay, right now. Everywhere emptiness. Where will I find the one? How about that? Ready for work on an impressive five minutes ahead of time. Ten minutes ago, I was still dreaming of organization. I am still dreaming. Miss Executive Secretary of Dallas on one knee, Miss Executive Secretary of Fort Worth on the other knee, and me in the middle, dictating. Look, if this system of living close to work uh, so we can sleep late is going to work, you've got to get some sleep, you know. I didn't hear you come in last night. Well, what time did we come in? You weren't there. I wasn't. Mr. Levi is expecting a Styles Murdoch. Oh, yes. Here are your employee cards. Thanks. We've got like uh, five minutes, boss lady. How about some coffee? Our sidewalk cafe is straight back. One important thing to remember is that all of our customers are professional buyers. They know what they like, and so we don't make any sales pitch. We let them select their articles, you present the piece to them, tell them the characteristics, and that's that. Uh, you'll find that every piece has a suggested retail price. Take it out of my salary. Oh, yeah? Well, what, you'll live on the rest of this month. Well, is it that expensive? Todd, put in the price. List or wholesale? Oh, he's a nice guy. Wholesale. I haven't the courage to say the numbers, Mr. Levi. It's not that tragic. We're insured. Well... In that case, I'll, uh, I'll get a room. No, I'll get it for you. Oh, my pleasure. Aren't you surprised to see me? 
Should I be? They usually are. I know who you are. I'm glad. You're from the insurance company. Talk about quick service, huh? Look, uh, I'm in a rush, huh? Don't be. Every moment we have is precious. Value them. Hold to them as long as you can. I'll try to help you. Sure. They're easier. Sixteen dollars in my back pocket. I don't want your money. Well, what do you want? I want you to come with me. Who are you? I'm you. I'm your conscience. kill you. I want to save you, my friend. Now, once again, close the door. Put both hands on the wheel. Why? I've never seen you before in my life, and you've never seen me. Or have you? We shared the same cradle, you and I. We were nurtured by the same mother. The reflection in our mirror, it was I who stared back at you all these years. You and I sharing. You and I, your conscience. What is your name? Ask our mother. You consider me... Somewhere I read that you're not supposed to answer that question if you think the person who's asking it is. But I'll answer it anyway. What you need is a crash program with a psychiatrist. But I feel remorse. The insane do not. I have compassion. The insane do not. And I have purpose. And when I kill, I kill exquisitely, painlessly. I plead with you, brother. Listen to me carefully. Follow my instructions without question. I do not want to kill you. Start the engine, please. Drive where I tell you, park where I tell you. Then what? Then we wait. For what? We wait for a decision. Will you tell me what you're talking about? The decision. Whether you are to live, or whether, like the others, you are to be sacrificed. Harry? Hello, Harry. Hot stop. I need these things right away. All right. Not back yet, huh? Does he drink? Oh, don't knock it. It was my first day on the job, and I broke a $500 jug. I'd sure take a couple of drinks. Not Buzz. Well, has he ever broken a vase before? No. Well, so there you go. Thanks.
Todd, have you checked at the front reception desk? No, I thought he'd be in back somewhere. Well, I've already checked with the boys on the truck ramp, and they haven't seen him either. Okay, thanks. Sure. Hi. Remember me? Select him for it. Yeah, there was a fellow with me with dark hair, Murdoch. Oh, yes. Have you seen him? Yes, he left. I checked him out at uh, 2.30. Well, didn't he say where he was going or anything? No. He was with a buyer. Oh, blonde or brunette? A man. It was John Farrington, Republic Furniture, Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks. gun away from my ear you said drive okay I'm driving if I'd wanted to I could have hit the back end of that truck and splattered you all over the back seat but you didn't you know why you're not prepared to die I am turn in over there off the engine. I'm going to hand you a briefcase. I want you to open it. There are certain objects inside. You mustn't touch them. Only one item. A scrapbook. I urge you to read it carefully. Once in Chicago, the police almost caught me. They used tear gas. I'm better prepared now. Take out the notebook. Close the case, please. I save those clippings for only one reason, to convince those who need convincing that I am sincere and dedicated. Perhaps you noticed how beautifully they died. Without pain. All except Adler in Los Angeles. He sat in a car too, just ahead of me, like you're sitting. But he started blowing the horn and, and screaming. It pains me to remember, but I, I had to shoot him. Why couldn't he understand? Why couldn't he help? Can you understand how sick it made me to do what I had to do to Adler, when he was my brother too? Don't you see how wasteful it was? He destroyed the concept I chose for him. He betrayed the opportunity to serve. He aborted the whole trial. Murdoch, make your life and mine, or our deaths, whichever it may be, mean something. Let us serve. Don't you want to serve? Why me? Why does an artist paint an apple instead of an orange? Why does one man adore one woman and detest another? All morning I drove and I walked and I searched the city from end to end looking for someone worthy of the sacrifice. I found you. I should be frightened. I should be shaking in my boots. What's the matter with me? I can't make myself believe it's me. Or that a guy that looks like you, just an average kind of run-of-the-mill guy, could kill six people. I didn't kill them. New York did. Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Cleveland did. Sure they did. What else can I do? Unfortunately, people can only be purged by tragedy, frightened into decency. Can you blame me because 
Society requires shock treatment. Mark your watch, Murdoch. 24 hours is all I ask of them. 24 hours of purity of heart so that we may live. Messages for 3.32? Let me check and see. Did Mr. Murdoch get in? Haven't seen him, sir. Marlene, Janie, and Peggy. Please, please. No, there's nothing wrong. I, I just want to talk to him about something. Sergeant, my name is Stiles. Todd Stiles. S-T-I-L-E-S. -E when was the last time you saw him? About 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon, the girl at the reception desk said he left about 2.30 with a buyer from Cleveland, a man named Farrington. Hey, Sheriff, I got something on that Farrington case. Trot it in fast. Right. This way, Mr. Stiles. Put it through every test in the book. Call me the second you're through. Okay. Mr. Stiles, Sheriff. Stroden. How do you do? Lieutenant Lee. Stiles came in on a routine missing persons complaint. A friend of his named Murdoch, Buzz Murdoch. Last seen leaving the trademark at 2.30 with John Farrington from Cleveland, Ohio. Thanks. Sit down, Stiles. That's all right. What's going on? This uh, friend of yours, Murdoch. Good friend? Yeah, he's a good friend. Why? And this man, Farrington. Did you see him? No. How do you know he left with Farrington? The receptionist at the trademark saw them leave to get, get her. Uh, look, who is this guy, Farrington, and uh, wh what's happened? Farrington's dead. Oh, well, not the one who took your friend. You that one only calls himself Farrington. The, the real John Farrington was killed in Cleveland last week. No, I'm sorry. Murdered. What's he want with Buzz? He's a mental case. He hasn't known any of his victims. But once he kills, he takes on their identity until the next victim, in the next city. Well, now he's picked on Dallas. We just received a second communication from him about, oh, about an hour ago. I think I'd better tell you, he signed it, Murdoch. He gives us the same ultimatum he gave New York, Chicago, Detroit, San Francisco, L.A., and Cleveland. What ultimatum? Through all communication media, radio, newspaper, TV, we're to inform the people of Dallas that for the next 24 hours, they're to follow the Ten Commandments. All ten. Or he kills Murdoch. Like he said in his note, uh, the people of Dallas are the jury, and uh, the infinite nigh. We are the judge. <laughs>
Roll up the window. Here. Minerals and vitamins. You better take them. Obviously, we can't stop at a restaurant, and we will need our strength, won't we? You know, I grew up with a kid, Horse Russell. Became famous. He holds the all-time record in New York. The youngest cat to fry at Sing Sing. That's a dubious honor, I grant you. But, uh, well, it was his claim to fame. What's yours? Me and the six others like me? I bring you truth, just as you bring meaning to me, give me identity. If you live, if the people of this community want you to live, you'll be worthy of God's goodness. And if you die, you will have his forgiveness. Either way, yours is the triumph. You keep talking about the community and if the people want me to live, why don't you let them choose? Are you afraid? I have given them instructions. All I ask is 24 hours. One day of goodness. Is that asking too much? You sit there with a gun in one hand and a scrapbook full of dead people on the other and you get sore over a couple of kids. From you, Murdoch, I would expect more. Far more perception than that. Drop the scales from your eyes. Consider the present society of the world. Are we still individuals or are we prisoners of bureaucracy? Insects in vast, grinding systems, carrying out ant-like, apparently rational actions with no human idea of the ends they serve. Ours is no longer a guilt culture in which control of wrongdoing is self-imposed by conscience. Instead, we have a shame culture, one in which acts are judged good or evil solely on the basis of whether one is caught or not, in which the worst punishment is, is public humiliation, not private guilt. Ours is a world, Murdoch, in which conscious morality is treated with derision and reason with scorn. This is an age which no longer waits patiently through this lifetime for the rewards in the next, but instead mills anxiously about overindulging, driven to cheat, driven to crime. So I have killed six men. Well, let me tell you that each time I died with them, each time I killed myself too. So what is that? That insignificant sacrifice against the gigantic moral collapse of the world? Don't you see, six or six thousand, I shall go on killing until they see that it must stop, until they cleanse themselves, until they cure this sickness in their souls and beg me to stop, beg me, beg me to stop. Then so would you say that he was about my size? Yes, he was about your size. All right, now I have some pictures of this book I want you to take a look at. Notice the build on this man. Anything like that? It's more like this one. All right, how about the eyeglasses? Here's the Murdoch shot, Sheriff. These are pictures of the faces, the old Murdoch square on the triangular. You see anything? They like this? Anything at all like this? Yeah. All right, Bates. Full distribution. Early squads, 11.30 details, yeah, substations, all radio district patrols are crushed. Uh, all vehicles. In the next half hour, we'll supplement them with composite pictures. Mark! Anything yet? Dispatchers had the descriptions on the air for the last half hour, Sheriff, and they'll show you. Okay, now. Uh, each of the previous cases, the victims have been found in the immediate area of a bus station, train station, or an airport, suggesting that he commits the actual crime that you're an escape hatch. Well, then, let's turn back over. Time to victim's found. He's long gone to the next city. Facial expressions. All right, all right. What are you doing about Buzz? What are you doing to keep him alive? We're trying, Stiles. All right, I'll be Look, we've asked the Times Herald, the news, all broadcasting stations, not to print or broadcast any news that might set this guy off. Not even a hint that anybody's breaking a commandment. We've tried to pick up all the previous editions off the streets. We hope we can buy some time.
That's great. That's just dandy. Look, Stiles, we can't even figure out how he kills. You mean you can't figure out how he kills? That doesn't make any sense. That's right, it doesn't. They find a corpse, but no cause of death. What about autopsies? Surely the they've done autopsies on every victim, each tissue, each cell, and by the top pathologists in this country. And nobody can figure out how these murders were done, except for the man he shot in L.A. Look, Stiles, I, I don't know. It, it's as though this, this crazy man is, is actually able to call down the wrath of heaven. Also in Dallas today were members of the Society of Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing. Shaving a haircut, anybody? The Weather Bureau predicts 48 degrees in downtown Dallas by 7 a.m. with a promise of sunny skies and light prevailing winds from the northeast. Dan McGraw reporting from the KRLD newsroom. Next news 30 minutes away. Now back to the Clockwatch Show. Turn it off. Sounds like a rip-roaring night in Dallas, doesn't it? What'd you call it, a gigantic moral collapse? Quiet, I'm thinking. Well, then stop thinking we're all headhunters. You heard the man. Big sports news, city budget, lion clubs meeting, down by the old mill stream there, barbershop quartet. Why don't you stop thinking about the evil things and stop thinking about the good things for a change? The real miracle, not how low we've sunk, but how high we've climbed in spite of everything. Maybe it's working. Maybe they're finally listening. Murdoch, pull over there. Murdoch, do you know what this means? What if they're really going to do it? What if they, they care enough about you, about one human being, an utter stranger? Enough? To live in virtue for 24 hours. Care enough to save you. Murdoch, do you know what this can mean? Do you understand that never in the history of the whole world has anything like this ever happened before? Oh, yes, men have died to save other men, but who lives to save them? You're thinking I'll kill you anyway, even if they obey my mandate. You're thinking I can't afford to leave a witness. You don't really know me. You judge me by ordinary standards. Murdoch, I swear to you, I'm sick of dying. I tremble each time I die. I want to live. I want you to live. I want us all to live in goodness. Do you hear? Don't do anything stupid. I must know. I, I've got to check. There's a newsstand about a, a block down on the right. And don't do anything. I would have to shoot you. Don? Paperboy. Sorry, don't have any. Well, I happen to know that the morning edition has been out for over an hour. Truck just came and picked them up again. Now, why would they do that? Beats me. Well, I happen to be interested in that particular edition. Is there anything you can do to help me locate one? For a buck, you've got mine. Thank you, sir. Thank you. May I ask you a personal question? For a buck, ask. Why aren't you home with your mother and father? What home? Tell me, Murdoch, why is it considered a more heinous crime to steal a man's wallet than to breach the responsibilities of parenthood? Stolen money is quickly spent, but a neglected child. Story of your life? Drive on.
York, where to? I'm sorry, Murdoch. The airport. Sure you won't join me? No, thanks. Up there here with coffee. If I could only figure out why. You think that'd make it easier? No. No. Eighteen years, and each case is like the first one to me. My wife, and she... She faints if I cut myself shaving. She says, why don't you develop an attitude toward it? That way you can live with it. I only knew one officer who ever really developed an attitude toward it. We finally got him off the force. Strode. Yeah? Yeah, be right there. Marlin, Bates. Lieutenant Lee found a car. It was a rental, all right. The rental agent recognized the sketch. No, nobody's in it. But it's parked at the airport. Let's go. Naturally, the hands fall into a position of prayer when bound by cuffs. You wouldn't think it necessary to force people to pray, would you? I'm sorry, Murdoch. I'm genuinely sorry to have to do this. But you will feel no pain, I promise you that. Just one drop, one tenth of a drop of this solution. And in seconds, you will have completed this earthly phase of your existence. In Germany, after the war, for a sufficient number of marks, one could buy even as dark a secret as this. Just consider it. One penful dropped into the water supply of a metropolis. And any human being who touched that water to his lips would die instantly. I must confess, Murdoch, as ghastly as the prospect is, I've been thinking lately that perhaps a, a demonstration on that scale is a, the only possible solution. I have tried, up until now, I have tried to, uh, to accomplish all with the least amount of killing. But nobody will listen. Do you suppose I shall have to destroy an entire city in order to make them listen? Who made you God? Why not me? You talk about the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill? No exceptions. You understand that? No exceptions. Not you, not me, not nobody. So what does that make you? A Pied Piper whistling people in the hell. One of men ever agreed on anything. Now what makes you think that, that human nature is something that, that's one way and no other way? Rules carved into a, into a stone easy to follow. I'll tell you about the rules. They're written on the wind, with the blood and the sweat of people living every moment of their lives. But God digs. Let him choose, he said. He's aware. Let him build. One good thing leads to a better one. And little by little, man climbs. So go ahead, butcher boy. Chant your unholy chants. Go on, spray me with your, with your poison bug juice and, 
and go on deluding yourself. But you're not going to pray and pour over me because on the, on the worst day of my life, I've never done anything. Anything that even begins to come close to how, how rotten evil you are. Are these your last words? Then these are mine, to you. I forgive you your sins and your trespasses. Amen. I don't know what's in it, but it'll kill you quick. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. You, Murdoch, you and I, brothers, where I failed, make them listen. Make them. Columbia Pictures, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.